recently listened to Veritas 48's video entitled, Science is the Slave of Philosophy, I experienced something like deja vu. He was expressing a thought that I have long harbored and have spoken of frequently. Many people today are of the unfortunate opinion that the advancement of humanity is the sole realm of science. I've even spoken to a few scientists in the YouTube community that have expressed the notion that everything is beholden to science, that is, your love life, your spiritual life, your creative life, and any other type of life you can imagine are simply cast as secondary to science. And this is done with a rare type of hubris, a haughtiness that's extraordinary in its all-encompassing nature. All other endeavors are simply transformed into little more than handmaidens, whose singular purposes are no more than pursuant to the services of High Lady Science. Veritas did a good and admirable job of dispelling this notion, but he was warranted in going farther still. And that's where I want to go with this video. I want to articulate what I call the trifecta of advancement. That is, the three things that actually are responsible for what many wrongly attribute to science alone. The three things that advance humanity. The first problem, as I see it, with the elitism among those involved in science, or fans of science, is the confusion of science and technology. It's commonly taken that science is the same as technology, and therefore all of the advancements that technology offers are gifts of science. This is simply not the case. Technology uses science, but is itself distinct from science. I would argue that technology comes in three bulk umbrella headings, or what I coin as the trifecta. The first element being philosophy or logic. This element grounds scientific inquiry, and ensures that the scientific method has the inductive capacity to define probability. Minus this first, or primary element, science itself would be rendered ludicrous with no rational basis. The second element is science itself, which is the core material discovery. Which is to say that this type of gas has this certain characteristic, or an electron does this and that. So logic offers science a rational basis in which to make core material discoveries. The third element is fictive in nature. I use the word creativity to describe it. This element takes the core discovery science provided and creates something useful from it. Uh, creativity is the engineering process of amassing technology. So the trifecta is like this. Philosophy lends a rational basis to science. Science lends to creativity core material discoveries. And creativity, using the gifts bestowed by the first two elements, gives the world advancement via technology. And if we're considering medical technology, perhaps a fourth would need to be added, compassion. This argument works in a logical context, but also in an historical context. Imagine a three-legged stool, with each leg representing an element in the trifecta. Prior to the scientific revolution, man had at his disposal only two of the three legs dependably available. Now, as you might well imagine, a two-legged stool is unstable. Though it is possible to remain upright given enough balance, that state is fleeting and rare. After the scientific revolution, when man had a dependable access to science, the third leg is added to the stool. With all three legs installed, remaining upright was no longer a problem. In other words, once science was added to the other two extant elements, humanity began to advance at a far faster rate. But this was not solely because of science. It was because of the three working in unison. To use another analogy, consider a battery. Science, utilizing logic, determined that an electrode had certain characteristics. Creativity then took that knowledge and built something useful with it, something that would aid humanity. So far from the argument that advancement is the sole realm of science, science is but one of three necessary elements for human advancement. My second argument is a short one, and it's from cause and effect, and is primarily concerned with refuting the notion of science as the primary and all else as the secondary. As I see it, science is a means to an end. Life, and that which makes life good, is the ends itself. Which is more important? The medicine or the life? The means or the ends? One may well argue that medicine can save life, and therefore the medicine is more important, to which I would argue that the life is a prerequisite for the medicine. 
but the medicine is not the same for the life. We can have life without technology or science, but we cannot have either of those without life. I would farther argue that a pointless life is one that's not worth living. Therefore, that which makes life good and gives meaning is that which the medicine seeks to preserve. Science is a wonderful tool, but it's not primary. It is a contingent process, dependent on the meaningfulness of life and all the immaterial things that make life worth advancing.